Hello, good people. Today, I'm going to discuss with you the causes and the cures of the scroll that shakes during vibrato. I can't even imitate it, but if you have it, you very much know what it looks like and what it is. And it's terribly disruptive because it can make your bow jump and it looks strange and it's just an indicator that something isn't right. So I'm gonna tell you the three main causes and then I'll give you some tips on how you can work on those causes. So number one cause is a thumb that is not passive. It's trying to participate in this nice oscillating motion. The thumb is trying to play the game with the fingers and it's fingers only. The thumb needs to just stay out of the way and s sit on the side of the neck. So that's number one. Number two is fingers that are doing their oscillations not parallel to the string. So they might be going higher, lower. They might be doing a diagonal motion across the string, but they're not doing a rocking motion exactly parallel to the string. That can cause a disruption to the scroll. Number three, is what I call jackhammer fingers, and that's vibrato that is not consistent in its weight. If you picture a nice old-fashioned rocking chair, it rocks on its on the runners, but if you're 80 pounds and you're sitting in that chair, it's going to be 80 pounds wherever you are in the rocking motion, and that needs to be the case for your finger as well. And a lot of students I've noticed they'll they're squeezing and releasing or they're just they're just changing the weight of the finger on the string so and that can also impact the tone where you'll get a vibrato <laughs> I'm terrible at imitating it but you can hear little crackles in the tone where the finger breaks solid contact Okay, um, so let me first give you a cure that might just fix everything for you without having to dissect it further. I've used it on a lot of my students. I used to use it only before I really examined this issue and came up with other exercises. Um, so you pin the scroll to the wall. Uh, get a sponge or a, uh, you know, a nice soft cloth so that you don't put a mar a, or a scar on your scroll and so that the scroll doesn't go sliding sideways off the slippery wall. And then pretend, you know, this is the wall. I can't show you because the wall's behind me, but if this is the wall, walk up to the wall and pin the scroll there so the scroll cannot move. And what that does is it forces your hand to adjust to a scroll which is no longer mobile and so, sometimes that just brings everything into alignment and it fixes it you have to spend a fair amount of time with the scroll pinned to the wall and let your body adapt and get used to that but that can fix it so try that first and if that doesn't fix it completely then uh, follow these instructions that I'm about to give you so for the thumb that tries to participate in vibrato, uh, let me show you. Um, the first step that I take when I'm teaching students new vibrato is what I call the thumb swing. And it's surprisingly difficult for students to do because the, the finger on our hand that is most used for, for the motion that vibrato entails is the thumb. If you can look at your hand and put your thumb near the four, fourth finger and then put thumb near index and just swing it back and forth, that is so easy. But now what if I told you to move the fingers instead of the thumb? It's, we try to move from the base knuckle it's, but when your thumb is doing the motion, our thumb moves from this neat little, what I call the vibrato joint. It's invisible and it's right here under the webbing. 
that's the joint that that does that awesome thumb motion. That's what we need to move on vibrato. So if you're moving your thumb, do this with me. Move your thumb from index to pinky, index to pinky. Then get in, why don't you get in violin position there and move the thumb from index to pinky and index to pinky. Now, what if we trap the thumb and keep moving the thumb, but now the fingers are the ones that are moving through space. It's the same joint, it's the same motion, but thumb is now stationary and the rest of the hand is now moving. And that's what we need to teach the hand to do to have a successful vibrato with a stationary, non-participatory thumb. So um, let me just tell you the thing that people do wrong, the most common mistake people do when they're trying to do this is they try to move the fingers like that or they're, they're moving from the base knuckles. So you'll see a lot of that sideways stuff like they're milking a cow. <laughs> um, so watch out for that. You really want, you want it to be like you're knock, knock, knocking on someone's door, knock, knock, knock but you're holding onto your thumb. Knock, knock, knock. So it's very much a out front motion. So make sure that you're doing the knocking motion using your wrist, but really you're using your secret vibrato joint right in here. Okay, so that's the thumb swing and that takes a lot of time to develop that coordination. Then once you kind of have that, you can keep working on that while you do the next two things. Um, the next exercise is whooshes, and that's where we, well, I start with giant whooshes, and that entails moving your thumb, so forgive me for being non-progressive here, but the giant whooshes also addresses another, another problem later on, so let's do it anyway. So you take each finger respectively, and you're going to just whoosh from as low as possible to as high as possible while maintaining the same spot on your fingertip, which should be the inside corner, not the outside corner, not really the middle, well, kind of the middle, but inside corner. Do you see where my line is? There, focus camera, focus, focus. So watch and your thumb goes from first position up to like the top of this curve and then just leave your thumb there and slide your hand up and over and your goal is to just try to touch the top of your fingerboard it's good for you this is training parallel motion on the strings and it's also really stretching that vibrato joint and it's exaggerating that motion because you go all the way up and then stretch all the way back. Just go ahead and go crazy with this. Do all four fingers, all four strings because there's tiny differences from finger to finger and from string to string and you don't want to neglect any of them. Okay, so that's the giant wishes. From there, we go to mini wishes and you could the easiest place to do your mini whooshes is just with your the heel of your hand against the body of the violin. Now here's where your thumb is going to be totally non-participatory. And you're going to pretend like there's a bug guts on your string and you're trying to just kind of scrub them off with your vibrato finger. So it goes like chugga 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 chugga. But you're not pressing the finger down. You're just doing the surface. Now listen to this nice sound. Can you hear that? Now look at my thumb. Totally inactive. But I'm scrubbing a little spot and, and your fingers should be right in this chunk of fingerboard around where the body of the violin connects to the neck right near the purfling. So I actually have nicknamed this purfling position. It's a non-specific position for working on vibrato. Go ahead and just keep a straight wrist and plant the heel of your hand 
on the violin. The mistake most people make is they try to reach too high so their wrist isn't straight and then they're they're working on their vibrato in a very awkward unnatural position <laughs> like it isn't already awkward and unnatural but so you want to keep it easy as easy as possible the other mistake people make is they are too low they're reaching up from the basement and the palm of their hand is touching the the ribs of the violin instead of the, the heel of the hand and it's a little different for every person because there's such a range of palm sizes and of geometries but just do your best to come to a natural uh, straight wrist where the fingers naturally curl and rest on the fingerboard. And that's the best position for what many wishes. Um, and check out your thumb side in a mirror or in a camera and just make sure that the thumb is just sitting there. A lot of times I see a thumb doing weird sideways that's just totally if you're doing that you need to go back to the thumb swing some more and really learn how to do this but without moving the thumb and make sure you're knocking forward not milking a cow <laughs> okay so the th that's the two things for a uh, thumb that's trying to participate the third thing is a thumb that's just has the habit of squeezing and how is a thumb going to be non-participatory when it's got the habit of squeezing so for that issue I have a whole separate video called how to break the thumb squeezing habit in 28 days and it offers a lot of really good exercises and it challenges people to focus entirely on that thumb squeezing habit for 28 days and nothing else that's really it's not the only way to get rid of that stubborn problem but it can be a stubborn problem and it really helps to focus entirely on it to get rid of it okay so that's how to work on the thumb that tries to participate now for the second problem fingers that are moving non-parallel to the strings we've already discussed the exercise that I like to use and that is wishes and mini wishes because if you are staying on the same part of your fingertip that inside corner let me show you where my grooves are if you're staying on those inside corners and you're wishing up and down the strings um you're going to be parallel your hand is going to be learn how to align itself in this unnatural rotated position but following a definite line okay so do wishes and mini wishes on all four fingers all four strings and eventually get to the chugga 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 now if, if you already have a vibrato and you can do vibrato in first position then you can do your mini wishes in first position as well when I'm just teaching people vibrato I have them do their wishes up here where they have this little um, these training wheels this extra contact point that really helps to stabilize things but you can definitely do it down in first position and I'm not pressing the string yet I'm just scrubbing bug guts off of the string and you're moving you know no no more than an inch could even be a half an inch okay the third problem or cause of the shaking scroll is the jackhammer fingers I don't have a magical exercise to work on this except your awareness I think if you'll just envision a rocking chair and you listen to your tone because that'll really tell you if you're breaking contact with the string you'll get bubbles in your tone and just keep maintain a nice heavy finger weight no matter where you are in the oscillation do not change the weight it should stay the same um, so that's it J sometimes just understanding the cause of the problem is enough to fix it and I hope that in today's video I've given you something that you can grab onto and uh, proceed with solving this problem good luck and I'll see you next time